Today, I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of arrangement tips that will help your beat sound a lot more professional. A lot of times, especially with how DAWs are set up, we can easily get stuck into making rigid arrangements. Often we'll make beats that repeat the exact same thing over and over again with the patterns looping at the exact same time within our beat. And over time, this is going to make our beats sound a little bit more predictable and not as engaging if you do the exact same thing over and over again. So today, I'm going to show you guys how introducing uneven blocking into your beats can really help you out with this problem. So your beat goes from looking like this to something like this. Overall, this is just going to be a good way to introduce yet another layer of detail into your beat and help your beat be a little bit more interesting and a little bit less formulaic. So like I said, I want to quickly play a small part of this beat so you guys get a good idea of what the main loop sounds like. And as you can imagine, hearing this exact thing over and over again with no variation can really bore the listener. So to change that, we can change a number of things about our pattern blocks in our beat. I want to show you guys these ideas one by one. And before we get into it, if you guys like my videos, think about subscribing. It really does help my channel out. And if you get bored of my videos, it's just one click away to unsubscribe. Now the examples I'm going to show you guys here and how often I do them might be a little bit extreme. I just want to show you guys all these ideas if you get to the point where your beat is sounding a little bit too rigid and you want to introduce a little bit more fluidity. Using just a few of these ideas will go a long way. Now the most simple thing that you can do is just straightforward truncation like we have here. Instead of having a clear definite point where all of our instruments begin to loop over again, we can begin to play with expectations but in smaller ways. Simply put, you can just drop a few sounds like your drums or some instruments at the end or beginning of their patterns like so. And to do this, it's pretty simple. All you're going to do is go into your pattern block here and just drag the end or the beginning of it so you truncate it. Doing this at a few different parts in your beat can really help create a brief feeling of change within the beat. Overall, it's pretty subtle and it's pretty straightforward and easy to do. Something that would be a bit more advanced would be to take our pattern block and extend it into the next area. So here's an example of that idea right here. Again, this red line right here is typically where every single pattern would begin to loop over and we'd start to hear the exact same pattern over again. But you guys can hear what happens with this uneven blocking that I created here. We've basically taken a few of the instruments, not all of them, and we changed where those patterns end. Typically with this weird loop that I have right here, it has this pitch bend effect at the very end of its loop, and then it goes back up to its normal pitch at the very beginning of the loop. But with this section here that has uneven blocking, with this weird loop that I have, I extended the pitch bend so it starts to extend into the next area here. And I even did the exact same thing with this 808 pattern right here. Instead of going back to its initial note right here at the beginning of each and every single pattern, I just let the last note of my prior pattern right here extend into the next area of my arrangement. So again, this red line is where typically all of my patterns would end and the loop would start over again. But now certain patterns extend all the way out to this green line. Now one thing that I do want to point out to do this, it's not as if I'm going into my pattern here and truncating one loop and then merely extending one out and just calling it a day. This wouldn't work because the pattern itself isn't changing, it's not any different. Instead, I'm literally going into the patterns here and making them unique, and then literally changing the pattern itself by changing the notes around and extending it out. You guys can see looking at a typical pattern here, these are all two bar loops, but in the area that I wanted to introduce some uneven blocking, if I look at these patterns here, 
These patterns extend past two bars here, and that's how we get these additional notes at the very end. That's just something that I wanted to point out. And after doing this, like I mentioned, what we did here was we made the beat a little bit less rigid and a little bit less predictable as to where the looping point is for this brief moment in time in the beat. And again, this isn't something that you want to do over and over again in your beat. Just having this idea show up once in your beat is probably enough to catch your listener off guard and re-engage them. And we can do this exact same idea, but in the opposite direction. Instead of having our pattern block extend into the next one, we can take our second pattern and have that appear a little bit earlier. You guys can hear how this sounds. <laughs> Here we have these patterns where the looping point would be at this red line. But what I did was I took a couple of patterns and I started them early. With the 808 pattern, the note that would start the loop, which would be this one right here, would typically start at the beginning of the loop. But instead, I played it right here slightly early. Same thing with my weird loop here, as well as my kick pattern. I have them starting a little bit early as well. So again, we're getting rid of some of that rigidness in our beat. So far, we've been focusing mainly on the more melodic components in the beat, the instrumentation here, but we can do this exact same idea with our drums as well. Typically, if you wanted to create a snare roll, for example, you would add that at the very end of your loop, and then once the loop starts over, it's business as usual. But we can apply the same concept of uneven blocking to something like a snare roll as well, where what's going to happen is it's going to start to spill over into the next area like we have here. And you guys can see exactly what I meant about adding notes. I created an entirely new pattern here with my snare by making it unique. Then I added multiple notes right here, again past our typical two bar loop into the third bar here. And that's why this end point in our pattern is all the way over here in our playlist. Taking a step back here, we can apply this exact same concept but a little bit more broadly as well. Instead of having our overall structure of our beat be rigid, we can introduce this exact same idea of fluidity into our structure as well. If we take a look at a more typical beat structure, it might look something like this where we have a very distinct area for the verse section, and then all at once we introduce a whole bunch of new instrumentation for our hook section. Instead, we can introduce this exact same concept into this situation as well. Instead of having all of our additional hook sounds get introduced into the beat at the exact same time and end at the exact same time, we can do something like this. You guys can see I introduced the synth right here a little bit early. And same thing with the hi-hat pattern right below it. And coming out of the hook section back into my verse section, instead of having every single instrument stop at the exact same time, I took certain sounds and I ended them prematurely a little bit earlier than all the other ones. Like for example, my 808's only half the typical pattern here. But with another sound with my synth here, I chose to extend that into the next area instead. I made this pattern unique and I extended it out like I mentioned and then I added additional notes past the two bar loop like I showed you guys earlier. And then going back into the verse section, instead of having everything play at the very beginning, I decided to truncate a lot of the beginning notes here. And so we get this nice fluid feeling in between the different sections of our beat instead of having a more abrupt beginning and end when it comes to using a more rigid type of structure. So those are some small arrangement ideas that you can introduce into your beat to have things be a little bit less predictable. Again, these examples and how often I did them in this beat are probably a little bit extreme. I more so did this just to show you guys the different ideas and examples that you can come up with to introduce into your beats. So hopefully you guys have a better understanding now of how you can make your beats a little bit more interesting using these ideas. If you guys have enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. My free jump kit's available in the description box below as always. Same thing with a link to the Discord if you want your beats reviewed live. I do that every two weeks and I will see you guys next time.